come on. There we go. All right. Looks like we're live, so let me close that really quick. Hello, everyone. Welcome to another stream. Uh, no one's watching, but that was not always the case. Uh, I'm going to start out the stream by talking about what happened yesterday. Uh, my stream was, I'll say slightly rated, because I, I tend to picture a stream raid as like dozens upon dozens of people so that a single manage it all at once. But there was only like 10 people at its peak, so it wasn't a very successful raid. And uh, the the trolling that came out of it wasn't very good either. Uh, but that's what I'm going to start by talking about. So uh, yesterday I was streaming around this time as I normally do. Uh, I'll show off what we've got done while I talk about this. Um, here you can see, oh, that's got to be careful. Uh, we have the legs and torso and arms done. So tonight we are going to finish the Zaku's armoring and weapons off with the skirts and the guns. Um, so as I was saying, we were uh, we were raided, um, and they weren't. I'm gonna. I'm trying to take this off, but it's not working. Ah, oh, that was somewhat painful, and by somewhat I mean extremely. I uh, I stabbed myself in the hand with the command spike, so that's nice. Um, so yes, we we were raided um, ten people. Uh, some of them, when they realized I wasn't going to feed the trolling that they were trying to do, uh, they left basically immediately. A few more people stayed. Uh, a couple sort of constructive uh, criticism. Uh, one of them uh, stayed because I started talking about something mildly interesting in transhumanism. And they asked if I would upload my brain to a computer to live forever. Uh, if you're curious, the answer is yes, as long as at some point I could kill myself. Because if I could live forever, I feel like it would get too lonely at some point that I could never have like a meaningful relationship. Because everyone would die and I wouldn't. So as long as the option is there to turn myself off, yes, I would go and upload my brain to a computer. Either way, the trolling wasn't very successful. Um, my mom doesn't think I should explain why the trolling wasn't successful, but I really don't care. So the trolling wasn't successful because they just don't know how to mess with someone's analytics. I won't go much more into it than that. But for them to tro successfully troll me, analytics, they only helped. So that's what happened there. So I'm just going to move on, pretend it never happened. Um, thank them because they did only help but in the end i'm only better off so why are you still up here you are um i'm gonna keep you for your skull case and the other command spike but i don't need you on the desk because i'm not working with you all right so uh i have some stuff to talk about i don't know how much of it i'll get through um in the time i have allotted because uh i'm gonna be doing like all the quick wrap-up work how this goes um first thing i want to talk about is uh videos uh specifically youtube videos so as people may or may not know youtube's kind of gone downhill recently with adpocalypse and all that uh this content was never monetized it never was intended to be uh for unless it got huge i didn't find it worth it um but the adpocalypse so the adpocalypse didn't hit me but it's it still had some lasting ramifications for youtube in general so it's important to discuss in the context of everything what happened so in the wake of the adpocalypse and the potential loss of revenue and everything that went on um youtube's gone downhill so I was recently turned on to this thing called DTube, which is a company attempting to like actually go against YouTube and their crazy policies that has been come out in the wake of everything. And so it's a cryptocurrency based platform where no matter how small you are, as long as you get one video that gets big, you will get some sort of payout. So uh, it's sort of alluring in that aspect. It's also alluring in the fact that 
uh, they stand by that they will never uh, do ads. So basically all uh, stuff, all money exchanging through here is done directly through the people running it with the cryptocurrency. So there's no worries there. Um, and then there is, uh, so yes, what, where was I? Cryptocurrency, blah, 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 blah. I've, I already lost my train of thought. That's never a good sign. Um, so I was turned on to this website by someone else I watch on YouTube. And the hope is that it will be a viable competitor for YouTube. Uh, I understand that it isn't for now, so YouTube will still get all my uploads in the future, but um, I might, like, release them on DTube, like, a di like the Sunday before a review, and YouTube will get them the Monday, and it stay the same, but people who follow me on DTube can get them earlier. So I'm considering doing that... Um, We'll see how long that actually lasts, because if DTube sort of implodes as a platform because it's so new, that potential is still there. Um, I won't have my eggs all in that basket, but uh, I'm putting at least a few of the eggs in it for now. So it is... I'd appreciate if... Uh, it should be in the description now. Uh, I, th I think I did that earlier, so you should be able to find it in the description. Please go there and support me if you would like. Um, other than that, that's all I have to say on that matter. Um, I'll still do all my streaming here, and all my videos will be here. So you don't have to worry if you don't want to go sign up for another website. That's fine. Uh, just knowing that the option is open is enough for me at this at this moment in time. Um, so let's see. From there, um, this will be the last stream until next week. I don't know if I already talked about this, but... Um, I'm not going to do a stream doing the decals. Uh, in fact, the decaling uh, is going to turn into a post on the blog, I think. Um, we'll see how it turns out. But my plan is I'm going to do a tutorial on dry transfers and how to apply them because I see people question it a lot. So uh, I'm going to put that on my blog because it's something that I've been meaning to do. And this is the first kid I've had in a while that had the option open to me when I was more actively thinking about it to do a tutorial on it. So. Uh, I'll show off the decals that I'm going to be working with uh, on this stream before I end it off tonight. They're just sitting in my drawer. Um, but I will not have any video of me decals up on this channel. It will be done in a tutorial. So uh, as a result, this uh, the streaming is going to stop until next week. Uh, I have a kit coming in that... Although I do have another kit in the background on top of the Amazon box, right where my finger's pointing. Um, although I have that, that is not the thing I need to build next. That is the thing that's getting in on Friday. So no streaming until next week. Uh, I might pop in and do a quick stream and just say hello uh, for a few minutes and like clean up a kit I have or something, because that's something I want to start doing, is I want to start cleaning up some of my older kits with my skill as I have it now. But there will be no, like that's just only maybe. That's not a definitive plan. So that's something else to be aware of. Uh, is that everything like important I need to talk about? I do have my real grade Zaku right here that I'm going to show off at the end with the decals as well, uh, because I knew I said I was going to do that, and I didn't end up doing it yesterday because the stream rate sort of threw me off my game. But I will move on from there. Um, I have, for some reason, my list of things to talk about this week is uh, very dictated by movies, so I don't know where I'm going to start in this. Um, I guess uh, I'll start. I'm not going to go into movies yet. I'm going to see if, if I get through everything before uh if i get through all the other stuff i have i can have like the huge movie topics focusing on something else which might be positive also the hiccups uh please not happening 
if I could possibly avoid it. Um... Sorry, I'm trying to figure out how this goes because it's very tiny. Um, and then... Okay, there we have that. All right, so, sorry. I know I just stopped talking. Uh, the first thing I want to talk about is uh, collections. I'm a collector of things. Uh, some might call me a hoarder. I am open to that description. Uh, but I like to collect things. I've always collected things. This is just the latest in, of my collections and probably the one I've been the craziest about. But we'll just say I, this is the latest of my... Um, A1619. This is just the latest of my collections. So I'm going to go through some of the things I've collected and what sort of appealed to me uh, with them. Uh, I don't, I'll, I'll try and go in order of like my major collections. Uh, so elementary school, um, I started collecting several things in elementary school. None of them lasted very long. Uh, but the first one I remember collecting hardcore in elementary school uh, was uh, Yu-Gi-Oh! and Pokemon cards. Not so much to play the game because uh, my mom didn't like me playing the games because she thought I did not handle losing very well, which is understandable because I don't. Um, so not so much to play the games, but just because I like the cards. Uh, they all ended up getting taken away at some point. So uh, we'll just move on quickly from there. Uh, I collected like Walmart Naruto merchandise when Naruto was at like the peak of its appeal here in the West. Um, and Walmart sold the cheapo headbands and ninja tools and the like uh i collected the headbands for a while i got a few of the like ninja tool toy ninja tool toys but um the headbands were definitely the main one so i had a huge i'll say I'll ha i had a relatively huge collection of those um i think i had a rock lee a sound sand battle damage like i think i had most of them most of that came out i think i got um so Naruto stuff, the headbands, uh, I also collected the manga. The manga got taken away. I sort of just lost all the headbands over the years because uh, of moving and stuff. Um, if I ever do find them again, I wouldn't mind having them back, but uh, I lost most of them. Um, from there, uh, I collected Bakugan, which... Why? Why you do this to me? Why you do this to me? That's not nice. I don't like that. Um, I collected Bakugan because uh, they were interesting. The show uh, sort of sold me on it. I know I said I collected Bakugan in the last stream, so it's not like something I'm going to go super into. But I did collect those for a while, and I had them on to high school, and I sort and I took them with me everywhere. But uh, I don't remember what happened to them. I know I lost them while I was in high school. I lost them when I was 16. Um, it's a very specific recollection of when it happened, but not why, but I lost them when I was 16. So that'd be about five years ago. Um, let's see. Is there any other important things I've collected over the years, uh, after Bakugan? Um, after Bakugan, no. Um, Bakugan led directly into my next thing, which was TCGs. Uh, I started getting really back into Yu-Gi-Oh! in high school. Um, actually in middle school, but I didn't, like, go to tournaments and stuff until, uh, until high school. Uh, in middle school, I sort of just bought random packs as I found them in stores and stuff. And so, uh, what's that? I don't see my weapon runner, which sort of worries me. So I'm going to end up having to look for that because that's the next thing I, oh, it's right here. I'm just dumb. Yet again, it's just, a, I'm not paying attention. Uh, this is not important. This is not actually a piece I have to use to build anything. This is just the connection point for if I want to use it on a stand, which uh, I will need to do, but I'll show it off really quick. It's, it's the worst kind of stand connector. I hate these, but whatever. It's free and it comes uh, packed in, so whatever. Where was I? Uh, TCGs. Uh, so yes, in middle school, I started collecting... Um, 
Yu-Gi-Oh cards just as I like found packs and stuff. Uh, I didn't really play much because I didn't have anyone to play with. Uh, eventually, my brother did make a deck and he played with me, but he quickly fell out of it again because uh, he was older than me. And so he had other interests. But uh, I played it. And uh, eventually I constructed an Elemental Hero deck because before I got all my cards taken away because I was a bad kid, um, that was my favorite card to collect. So I made an Elemental Hero deck and uh, I found a local card shop that did weekly tournaments. And I went, uh, I went there most weekends to play. I don't, I don't know which one I cut off, which is never a good thing. Uh, I cut off 13. And what goes with 13? It's on this side, apparently. And 13 gets A11. Uh, so I went to a card shop and did their weekly tournament for uh, a couple years. And uh, I sort of fell out of playing Yu-Gi-Oh! because all the meta changes with the new series got obnoxious to keep track of and I didn't like some of the new rules and it got really boring when it came to a point when I wanted to play the game and I couldn't play it because duels ended in like two turns because of how the meta had shifted and so it was a boring game so I moved on and the card game I picked up from there uh, I attempted to collect magic cards and play but uh, as I put in one of my posts, the people at the card shop, if you weren't already initiated into magic, they were not going to help you. Uh, the people working there would have, but, you know, they're busy people, so I didn't really ask them to. And so the patrons of the shop did not help, is what I want to say. Um, so I didn't get it as much but then i saw a new thing on their shelf which was a game called card fight vanguard it was from a company i had never heard of uh called bushi road uh when i looked them up they were from singapore so my day i think i got on my birthday normally i went there with 10 to 20 dollars uh, on my birthday i could get double that or more depending on uh when if my mom had gotten paid recently um, but it was definitely twice as much. So I went that day and, uh, I think I had 50 that day. Um, so I had five for my entrance fee. And then there are these majestic giant golden box Yu-Gi-Oh packs that, uh, I opened a bunch of, and I kept getting, uh, black luster something or another. I don't remember too specifically. It was black luster something. Uh, and it was, uh, that card basically controlled the metagame at the time in Yu-Gi-Oh! So people kept trading me for it, but I'm like, no. And I just sold it and got another one and sold it and got another one. And eventually my luck ran out and I didn't get a good enough thing to keep the sell it and get another one. So I had a giant stack. Um, but I had enough to do one thing. And that one thing was I got a... Vanguard starter deck for $15 and a uh, packs, which were three each, but they did uh, two for five because they were cool people at the card shop. Um, also, I feel like this is wrong, but I know it isn't. That's going to bug me until everything gets put together. Um, I opened the starter deck and I looked through it and I thought it was cool. I got uh, the Royal Paladins because the only ones out at the time were Royal Paladins and um, and I got Royal Paladins because I thought the dragons looked boring. And I was right. The dragons were boring. The Royal Paladins were also boring but not as boring. And so then I opened my, my packs. Uh, my first pack was nothing special. I don't think I got... I think I got a regular rare. Uh, which, whatever. It's a regular rare. My second pack, however, I got a triple R rare. Uh, King of Knights Alfred, which is like the best card for the Royal Paladins at the time, considering there's only one booster set. So that makes it by default the best. Uh, and it, it was pretty cool. Uh, I was pretty excited. Uh, eventually, I found out how to game the system, so 
uh, my card shop, you were allowed to pick, um, you were allowed to pick your pack out of the box on your own. And uh, I figured out how to game the system where I would only go for a box that was recently opened. So I knew for a fact that the highest rarity cards were still in it. It's sort of mean to, to think about how I, I sort of cheated the system, but whatever. Um, so I'd only go for ones where the high value cards were, were still in there. And the high value cards were always on the, when you were looking at it from the front and uh, when you just head on, like on display would be, the rare card would always be on the right side between five and seven packs down. Uh, or no, five and seven packs from the top and there are 15 packs on each side. So I would only go for, for packs like that. And that is eventually how I made my most competitive deck. Um, so I stuck with that for a while because Yu-Gi-Oh got boring. So I started doing that. Uh, I didn't go to my card shop as frequently because they didn't do Vanguard tournaments just because it was so new and they didn't have a, a base of people willing to uh, come and dedicate a day to it. So um, for the longest time, I just went, got packs, observed others play Yu-Gi-Oh and... Uh, the people who played Yu-Gi-Oh, who also played Vanguard, in between their um, in between their matches in the tournament, we'd play Vanguard and just have some some fun. Um, and from there, uh, Vanguard was the first thing I ever like went to a big tournament for. Um, there was the official North American release. Um, event I went to that, and that was the first thing I ever went to. Uh, I made a, a friend there but he is not important to this story. And we haven't talked in a long time, so whatever. Um, he's not important to the story. I, I just figured I'd add that. Um, so yeah, I was really into the into the game. Uh, it was a lot of fun, and it was new enough that I could get into it and enjoy the metagame before it changed to the point that it was boring. Um, that, that lasted quite a while, actually. So I played for a couple of years on and off going to like regional tournaments. And that sort of culminated with like the last big thing I did for Vanguard was a SoCal regional tournament in, I don't care, I'll say where it was. It was in Pasadena. Um, and that was the last thing I did, as I said. Uh, I had been collecting for a long time, and I had made my like first actually competitive, competitively viable deck. And I won't say it was competitively viable because um, it was just actually inherently good. It was competitively viable because it was a strategy within an archetype that wasn't used very much. I did from Royal Paladins to... Uh, I hated Gold Paladins because they became so prevalent in my first regional and my second regional. Gold Paladins had been basically nerfed to the point that I didn't have to worry about it, so I still enjoyed playing. But I played Shadow Paladins, which were basically the opposite of Royal Paladins, where Shadow Paladins, uh, Royal Paladins, they get their strength from having a bunch of allies on the field. Where Shadow Paladins, it's the exact opposite. Shadow Paladins kill their allies for power. Um, I played a Shadow Paladin deck uh, centered around the Dark Dictator, which was basically the Shadow Paladin equivalent of, um, of the King of Knights Alfred that I mentioned earlier. And so I just had really good luck of the draw that day, to be honest. I probably shouldn't have won as much as I did. The strategy was I would uh, go through and do a standard uh, Shadow Paladin set up until riding, which is the term for making your fire. I would ride to uh, Phantom Blaster Overlord early, and people would not know how to respond because uh, the initial play style for Shadow Paladins is go to Phantom Blaster Dragon, and then Phantom Blaster Overlord gets a really OP ability. But Phantom Blaster Overlord was just a feint. Um, I would then 
uh, you can't rank up after rank three, which a Phantom Blaster Overlord is. So everyone expects, okay, so he's done. He's not going to do anything now. And that's where you get the false sense of security. So I could just bait them to play longer because they're like, oh, all right, he's done. I can just keep doing what I'm doing and stall him out. In fact, that is wrong. They would let me get a full board because I would like pretend, okay, I'm try I just have to start doing cards on the board because now my main deck strategy is uh, not viable. When in reality, I was not. Um, once I had a full board, I could ride to uh, the Dark Dictator, ha then have enough uh, stacked up beneath him, which is called its soul, to use his special ability, which is nuke everyone on the field and get a bunch of uh, attack power based on that. And then I would fill my field back up and uh, just smack them really hard in one go and in a bid for the win. And it worked more than it should have. It was uh, weirdly viable. I actually used it against last year's world champion and nearly won the duel uh, if it were not for a lucky draw that he got. So I found it interesting. J18, J5, J11, just a lot of Js. Well, let's work on that. Uh, J18. So yes, uh, after that, I sort of fell out of playing Vanguard because I didn't have... Uh, my social anxiety got me to the point that I didn't want to go to the card shop anymore. And there was some family stuff going on at the time that made it even more difficult for me. So I just didn't go as much and I sort of fell out of playing it. And from there, uh, I didn't really collect much of anything. I mean, I would enjoy having things, but I, I wouldn't say I collected anything specific. Uh, until I collected like comic book stuff, like uh, some occasionally a Batman comic. I have this off to the side just because it's not put away. I have an entire set of Lantern Corps rings, which I could go into. I could mention that I know all the Lantern Corps oaths and up my nerd cred or, or lower my uh, attractiveness, depending on who you are. But I know all the Green Lantern Corps oaths. Um, but it was mostly just that sort of stuff and so my next big vanguard was uh, Gunpla and so here here we are now years later and this is what I'm doing with my time it's, it's fun right you enjoy watching me the no one that's actually in here right now yeah uh, I guess I'll go into that because because it's like a cheap segue that uh, now, and then it will also lead me into something else I have to talk about. So, hi, Chloe. You having fun down there? Uh, my dog sort of likes to just roll around on the floor and. <laughs> it's cute to watch, but it's annoying to listen to. So, if you can hear that, I'm sorry. Um, I accidentally gouged this out. This is why I said I had to change my knife. I forgot to do it. Well, at least it can be on the bottom. So as long as I can sand it so that it's not all gross looking. Uh, so yes, I know all the Lantern Court Oaths. Uh... I love you. Um... I know Green Lantern, like, I know the standard ones, I'll say. Because Green Lantern, there's, like, 20 different ones, depending on, like, certain aliens got their own special one. And then there's the Alpha Core and Alan Scott. So, there's a bunch, but I know the main one. So, I guess I'll go through all of those. Uh, I'll start with Black and work my way through the rainbow. Uh, there is no White Lantern Core Oath. Uh, the only one that we ever knew of was Kyle Rayner and... Uh, last I checked, he didn't have his White Lantern powers anymore. Spoilers, I guess. Other than that. So, the black one is... Oh, good. Now that I'm trying to remember them, I can't remember the black one. Uh, the darkest night falls from the... Uh, uh, the blackest night falls from the skies. The darkness grows as all light dies. We crave your hearts and your demise. By my black hand, the dead shall rise. Got it. Um... As you can tell, I like Green Lantern, but he's not my favorite superhero, because Green is not my favorite. I actually like the Red Lanterns the best. 
not just because it's red, which would make me biased, but because um, J16. Just because I find their power set to be the most interesting. Um, let's see. So red, uh, with blood and rage of crimson red, ripped from a corpse so freshly dead, together with our hellish hate, will burn you all. That is your fate. Uh, the orange one, uh, it sort of just follows the the cadence of the other ones. Uh, orange is avarice. And uh, the guy that uh, was the orange lantern, because there's only one, um, when he saw a bunch of other lanterns reciting their odes at once, he decided he wanted one, so he made one up on the spot. And it is, what's mine is mine and mine and mine and mine and mine and mine, not yours. It's uh, real compelling, huh? Interesting. Uh, trust me, they get more interesting as you go. So from there, uh, the Sinestro Corps in uh, in Blackest Day and Brightest Night, beware your fears made into light. Let those who try to stop what's right burn like his power. Now, depending on who you are, again, but there's only two slight variances. It's like either Sinestro's might or Archillo's might, depending on when in the timeline it is. And then there's obviously in Brightest Day and Blackest Night, no evil shall escape my sight, let those who worship people's might be where my power green then turns light. Uh, and then uh, the blue lanterns, which are hope, which uh, are one of my favorites, but they are not my favorite. I'll say I like them the best. Like I like their characters the best, uh, but their powers are sort of dumb when I think about it. Um. Like, St. Walker's really cool. I like St. Walker as a character. Um, the story of St. Walker is uh, his world was dying, and so he went on a pilgrimage with his wife and kids to save it, but his wife and kids died, and so he never gave up hope. And when he reached the summit of the mountain, he found the Blue Lantern Ring. Sort of depressing, but that's how it goes. Um... I gotta remember how it starts, because the blue one always tricks me up on how it starts. Um, hope. In fearful day and raging night, with strong hearts full, our souls unite. Uh, fearful day and raging night with strong heart full, hearts full, our souls unite. Um, when all seems lost to the war of light, look to the stars for hope burns bright. Got it. Um, and then Violet, uh, Abin Sur made the Violet Lanterns. For those of you who don't know, Abin Sur is the guy that gave Hal Jordan his Green Lantern ring. Abin Sur uh, created the Indigo Tribe. And theirs is an alien language, so it's just going to sound like nonsense, but it is Terloric Sonber Naka Myrna Tromo Fontor Lekwot Urcher Lantern Kurlo Abin Sir Dunlek Nek Nok from Maro Sir. That's, um... Then is the Star Sapphires or the Violet Lanterns, um, or, yes, Violets. Uh, this is the last one, so I just, I gotta remember it. Um, when I'm trying to, like, call them for, like, a discussion, it's never, that's when they're never gonna show up. Um, for hearts long lost and full of fright, for those alone on blackest night, accept our ring and join our fight, lift conquers all violet light. There it is. So those are all the lantern corn, oath, corn uh, lantern core oh, oaths, um, and that segues into uh, DC Comics has better uh, is a better comic book publisher, but makes worse movies. Um, I will stick by this opinion wholeheartedly. There is basically no way for you to convince me otherwise. DC Comics has better characters and more iconic characters, but more awful movies. Um, but I will say that DC Comics 
has better animated movies. If you've ever seen like the Ultimate Avengers or the Young Avengers or any of those terrible animated Marvel movies, uh, they they have bad animated movies. It's just that the strength of their normal movies is really good on their own. Uh, DC Comics doesn't have that. DC Comics movies are objectively terrible in most instances. And so I will openly admit that. But if DC Comics realized that their animated movies are better, like Justice League Dark, and as much as I didn't like it, it was better than Justice League, the one that just came out, um, Batman, um, Gotham by Gaslight. If uh, DC would realize that their animated movies are stronger than their live action properties and put more budget into the animation and voice actors and basically just made them longer because that would help tremendously. They could market their animated stuff a, a hell of a lot easier than the other more objectively awful movies that they've been coming out with recently. And I would say that is what they need to do because Superman and Batman and Wonder Woman and all these beloved characters, people want to like them, but they're not making them likable in their movies. So you're sort of left in this awkward situation where you want to like these movies because they have characters that are just generally better than the Marvel ones, but Marvel makes like fun movies and DC Comics is trying to be all serious and edgy and dark, but they aren't succeeding. And so we're getting left with awful stuff. So I will continually stick by the opinion that uh, DC has better... Oh, I have a ringing in my ear. Tinnitus, that's always fun. Uh, DC Comics has better characters that are just very poorly executed. Um, I think they need to focus more heavily on their animation than their live action properties because their live action properties are just not doing it for consumers. Um, so yeah, that's my segue into movies. Um, superhero movies, I enjoy them, but I understand that they're all generally not very good movies objectively. So I'm going to move off of that topic now. Uh, my favorite, what I want to talk about is uh, my favorite 80s movie, because that is something I have thought about and know. Uh, my favorite 80s movie that's like, oh, this is a classic 80s movie, is uh, Karate Kid. Because, uh, I don't know, I just I find it appealing. I like... You know, it's one of those things that's like really catered to teenage boy escapism. And I saw it when I was a teenage boy seeking escapism. Uh, so, I, and I also found it like an actually compelling movie. Like, the protagonist was a terrible person for most of the movie. But Mr. Miyagi and, and uh, the rest of the more secondary characters were better characters than than Daniel was, I would say. Um, and I feel like it had like a decent arc altogether where um, oh, I lost my train of thought. Uh, it had a better arc um, in the end and the fights were all interesting and somewhat dynamic and you know nowadays you can't get a good kung fu movie. And I enjoy a nice, dumb, cheesy action movie. And so it's uh, it hits all the right spots for me as a I want a dumb movie to entertain me for two hours sort of thing. Uh, it is in, it is by no means like a fantastic movie or even the best kung fu movie or probably even the best movie in general to come out of the 80s. But it is my favorite movie that came out of the 80s. Uh, that isn't Star Wars. I will say that isn't Star Wars because that would just be unfair because I love Star Wars. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and talk about Star Wars. Um, I like Star Wars. Uh, that is that is no surprise to anyone who basically ever heard me talk ever. Uh, Star Wars is one of my favorite franchises in fiction ever. 
Uh, I just love the world, the characters, everything about Star Wars is uh, great. So, um, sorry, I'm trying to figure out how to make things work. Uh, you go like that. Look, we have most of a gun. Isn't that cool? Soon the Zaku will have weapons. All right, lost my train of thought again. This continually happens. Also, I think I forgot to put a clear piece into the gun's sight. So I'm going to do that now. Um, Star Wars. I want to talk about the movies and the order I saw them in. Uh, I think the order I saw the movies in was kind of weird. Uh, my brother got some sort of edition. I think he got DVD editions when they were relatively new. I think was what it was. Uh, that's not getting it in. Um, and there we go. Just making sure that's in. All right. Does that look in? It uh, it looks in and it's shiny. So I think the order I saw Star Wars was, I believe I've seen, I saw every movie in theaters starting with episode two, which is not the best, it's probably the worst. Um, people like to give the title of the worst Star Wars movie to The Phantom Menace. No. Uh, objectively, as a movie, it had better effects for the time it came out. Better acting. Less awful dialogue. I mean, I understand that the yippee and the are you an angel stuff Anakin did was uh, was awful. But none of them have achieved the same meme status as I don't like sand. It's coarse and rough, and it gets everywhere. Not like you, my lady. Nothing will beat that. So, that's why episode two is worse. Also, episode two has the worst plot contrivances. It's just an objectively worse movie. But I've seen everyone in theaters since episode two. Uh, typically with my brother, I didn't see the most recent one with my brother because he's on the other side of the country, but typically with my brother, um, what was I saying? Star Wars. Yes. Yes. Can I have this, please? Thank you. Um, I believe that I saw episode two when it, in theaters when it came out, obviously, as I said. It's one I recall seeing, which, hey, it's probably terrible, but, oh, I dropped... I dropped it. I dropped the piece. It's one of those... It's not a stream of mine if I don't drop something. I don't see it. Oh, that's always fun. It went between my legs onto my chair. Fantastic. Didn't have to get down on the floor. Um, yeah. Uh, so, yes. And from there, my brother got the uh, special editions where I saw episodes four, five, and six. Um, episode six was then and remains my favorite. Um, I know everyone says Empire, but episode six, for what it was, is my favorite. I like the Ewoks. Um... I find them adorable. Uh, I like how it ended the series with a sort of redemption for Vader and an understanding between father and son. The realization of Leia being Luke's sister, it all worked. So I enjoyed it the most. Um, I understand the merits of episode five and how it is probably objectively a better movie, but... Uh, for what it's worth, I think episode six is the best. Um, from there, I saw Force Awakens opening nights um, with my brother and some of his friends. Um, I did that wrong. All right. Let's see if I can get it without breaking it. Yep. All right. Um I saw episode seven in theaters with my brother. 
uh, I enjoyed it in the theaters, and I will admit that when uh, spoilers, but you don't get spoilers for year old movies, so this is your only warning. When Han died, which is just part of the cultural zeitgeist, so if you don't know this, I don't like you. Um, when Han died, I openly wept in the theater. Well, I don't mean I openly wept. I, I sort of teared up and actively cried when Han died. Um, and so uh, I, it it really brings to like a, cl a sort of clarity how Star Wars impacted my life. It's sort of like a, a seminal thing that uh, it makes up a lot of my personality. It's sort of how I got into science fiction, like hard science fiction was the science fantasy that Star Wars brought into the picture. Um, I don't like Star Trek. I think my dad likes Star Trek, if I'm remembering correctly. Dad likes Star Trek, right? Mom's asleep, so I don't know. I'm pretty sure he likes Star Trek. Uh, I don't, uh, I find, I mean, I haven't watched it in a really long time, so I might if I watched it now, but um, I didn't when I have seen it in the past. Um, maybe my tastes have changed as I've gotten older, but it is not as interesting. So Star Wars is one of those things that uh, will always hold an important place in my heart. Also, this is taking significantly longer than I thought. It's been about 45 minutes, and I expected that I would be uh, nearing done by now. But in fact, I still have the entire bazooka to do. Cool. Oh, that probably did not sound pleasant, but hey, whatever. Had to blow a piece out. Um, So I can put this in here. And here we have a gun. Um, I will put it in the hand of Char Zaku. And so it will be holding a weapon. Uh, I took away its um, heat hawk earlier. And by took away, I mean I shielded Zaku from the snow. Because I was... Uh, I took it with me on a car ride to just sort of look at. Also, maybe I'll get it to go in the hand... That has yet to be seen. Okay. Um, excuse you. Hmm. Yeah. Let's go ahead and work, shall we? Uh, all right. I think I figured out what the problem was. The thumb was getting in the way. Uh, once I figure out the right way to put this on, I will continue to the bazooka. But for now, I want to put the gun in the hand. Oh, good. And it's one of those loose connections where the hand likes to pop out. Uh, I I want standard holding hands on all kits. Because the... Oh, look! The fingers move. It's funny at first, and then it gets irritating when you try and do anything. I figured this might be better because of how all the fingers move. But... It seems to have all the same issues, so. Stay, please. Just make me happy. And stay. Oh, good. Done again. I'm not giving up on this, so this may be boring. Is it in? Is it? 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 Ah! It is in the hand. That was frustrating. 
Okay. Here, the Zaku has a gun now. Wonderful, right? Um, there, you can see it. <sighs> hmm. Oh, whatever. All right, here it goes. I'm going to make the bazooka now. I've lost my train of thought. Ugh. See, this is what happens when I get angry. Everything, everything goes away. Oh, there's one. Uh, sports versus sport movies. Um, I am in the camp of I enjoy sports movies, but I hate sports. As you can tell, I'm fat. I have always, well, I haven't always been fat. I was... I've been a fat kid for a long time. And so... Um, I never, I was never really into sports. I played soccer for a year. And the only time my team ever won was when I was goalie. And I'm still salty about the fact that, uh, despite knowing this, my coach never let me be goalie again. And I was only goalie because our usual was sick that day. Um... So that still angers me, but I was never really into sports. Um, on the other hand, sports movies always were really interesting. Uh, I can look at the faults in movies like Angels in the Outfield now, but uh, back when I was younger, I really enjoyed Angels in the Outfield. Um, it's sort of dumb now, but hey, I grew up relatively, and by relatively, I mean genuinely relatively close to Los Angeles. It was, it was a couple hours away, but that's close enough that it made the Angels or the Dodgers, by default, your team you rooted for in baseball because I wasn't close enough to San Diego that it would be the Padres, and no one liked the Padres. But um, sorry. Focused. So I like I like I like sports movies. Uh remember the Titans being a football movie was good. Um what other ones? There were a few other ones. Either way, I like sport movies, but I don't like sports. Um sport movies I feel like I'm actually invested in the team winning because um J10 because there's like characters behind the team. And they, like, take the time to build up characters. And I just, I'm not invested in the people who play sports enough to, like, care if they win or lose. So, it's it sort of loses it for me. And on the other hand, um, sports movies builds up characters. Like, remember the Titans and stuff. Uh, and so, I care about the team and the sport is suddenly interesting. So that's sort of why I have this opinion that I like sports movies better. So I'll, I'll go through a few sports and, and list my favorite uh, movies for each. Remember the Titans is my favorite football movie. The Sandlot is my favorite baseball movie. And what I uh, want to talk about the most probably now is uh, Space Jam is my favorite uh, basketball movie and my favorite sports movie in general. It is... Uh, now, looking back at it, a legitimately awful movie. Um, the pacing is weird. The acting is weird. <laughs> Spoil uh, people who play sports are not the best actors. But uh, I still enjoyed it. I and that might sort of be by default because uh, I went to an after-school program at the YMCA when my mom worked late um, and there, there were like a few default movies that were always picked from being The Dark Crystal, which is a, a animated movie, which uh, I, it's not really animated either. It's a movie Jim Henson made, so it's, it's full of puppets and stuff. Um, so we defaulted to um, Dark Crystal which is my sister's favorite, uh, or Space Jam, or Charlotte's Web. 
Charlotte's Web uh, is not a watch again and again movie. It is a it barely passes as a watch it the first time movie, even back then when I was a dumb kid. So, um, I I always put my vote in for Space Jam, and it made me actually like basketball too. Um, I never like watched playing like like I never watched the sport but I wanted to play it a lot. And uh, to that end, I'm a short guy. I'm about 5'6". Um, and that's on a good day. Because it's fine. But... Um, J... 14. I had a decent jump shot. And uh, I'll owe my interest in like legitimately playing basketball to Space Jam. Uh, I had... I was... I, I just, I enjoyed it. I don't know. Sports movies make me interested in the sport enough to play, but not enough to watch it when it's pe like just actual sports. And so uh, everyone around here cares about sports. Um, everyone's like, oh, football, hockey, blah, 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 blah. I'm like, uh, yay. Um, one-on-one -on -one competition sports are slightly more interesting, I guess. Uh, I'll put tennis above basically all other kinds of normal sport, but hold on. Let's, let's try and figure this out. Um, let's see. How you do? You go like this. All right. Um, sorry, I'm focused. Uh, I don't know what I was saying. Something about sports. It's always. Don't you just hate it when you're thinking about something mildly important uh, and then it just dies? I can talk. What can I talk about? Because I got to finish this up. Uh, I'll talk about my my Gunpla collection a little because I'm going to be showing off my real grade Zaku at the end of this. Um, so I I know I've talked about this briefly before, but um, all my kits when I first started my review blog, I didn't get them as frequently, so I reviewed the kits I already had. Chloe, what's wrong? I reviewed the kits I already had, and in my quest to do that, I, I tried my best to leave my kits um, in the condition that I made them in when I put them together. So my old kits really looked awful, and that includes my real grade Zaku. Um, uh, down there. Is that how that works? Um... Yeah, so I tried to leave them all the condition they were when I built them. Uh, that didn't work as well as it could have, but I I want to end up cleaning them all. And I did clean my real grade Zaku. I took off all the decals that were peeling. Oh, that was gross. I took off all the decals that were peeling. Um, I uh, cleaned all the numb marks everywhere. And this isn't the first kit I've done it with. I believe I did it with Virtue when I finished my review of Virtue. I did it with Exia when I finished my review of Exia. I did it with uh, RX78 when I finished its review. Which, uh, I guess I could talk about that really quick. Um, the RX78-2 was, uh, when I first wanted to review kits, I initially wanted to start a YouTube channel. Now, obviously, that happened now, but uh, at the time, I couldn't figure out how I was going to do it and how I was going to film everything. And so uh, I went to review blog by default. But my first video was going to be a review of the RX-78-2 Revive. Um, and I opened my blog post with what remained of the script that I could remember that I had written because I had scripted it. Uh, and when my review video fell apart. Uh, I sort of just put the RX-78-2 on the back burner for review. I did eventually get to it after losing the script, um, but 
uh, I I clean I didn't uh, like my review of the RX seventy eight dash two when it went up on my blog because I felt that if I had been able to just do the um, my initial plan when I reviewed the RX 78-2 was just to copy paste the script with like sort of a, a note saying, you know, this was actually going to be a video at some point and I wanted to just post the script because it had all the information that I would have talked about in the review, but I lost it. So I didn't like it as much as I could have at first. And then I cleaned up the RX 78-2 and it sort of became one of my favorites now that I've gone back and looked at it. Um, it looked really dumb at one point, but now it uh, looks halfway decent. I cleaned everything up. Also, this has like molding lines on here, and so I'm going to have to like hardcore sand clean this up. I'm not going to do that on stream, but that's something I'm going to have to do because it looks ugly. Um, so yeah, I'm going to eventually clean all of my kits because... A lot of them look bad. I think I cleaned my ashtray as well. I uh, I touched it up, and I also did a little bit of Tamiya cement along the edge of the katana's uh, scabbard because it's uh, it's held together by stickers, and that's awful. So I put it uh, Tamiya cement over the edge so that it would um, not pop apart as bad. I sort of found out that Tamiya Cement is the godsend that fixes basically any problem ever. And so, yeah. As you can tell, I ran out of things to talk about because I had one of my brain farts earlier, which cut one of the topics short, and I don't remember where I was, and I'm not going to talk about it again. And I'm just trying to, like, get to the point of talking about my real grade and stuff, so... Uh... I, don't, I guess I'll try and figure out which uh, kit I want to clean up first. Uh, probably not one of my... Um, how does this... Why, why you no work? Why you no work? Because you don't want to. Alright, how do you go? Why are you not... There you go. As you can tell, the bazooka is coming together. And it's rather large um, for scale there's my hand and it's not done there's still a piece that'll go on the back <sighs> i i lost my train of thought and i have no idea what to talk about and so i'm sort of just rambling nonsense and that's never good um do to do to do if i've noticed one thing it's that i can manage to at least keep talking and not go totally silent when I run out of things to talk about. I mean, I'll go silent for like a few seconds at a time, but it's never like minutes of silence at a time when I'm trying to think of something. So at least I have that down. Um, I want to think of another topic that I could get my brother on board to stream with me again, because honestly, that was the most fun I had streaming in a while. So uh, he recently got... So my brother hadn't built anything in a while. Um because he has uh, a real life where he has to, like, worry about things. Uh, but his girlfriend got him a real-grade Wing Zero Endless Waltz. And he built it, and he, uh, he remembered how much fun it is to build and sort of decided that, uh-oh, this is potentially dangerous that I got back into this. Um, he His big plan was he didn't want to get a kit until... The, uh, what's it called? Um, G Self Verka came out this year from the Verka poll that was done last year. He didn't want to get another kit until that was available. That fell apart. Um, so here we sit. What am I doing? I want. To cut you here. I kind of want him to like. I know I wanted to. I want to do guest posts on my blog, but I don't trust people. My blog. My mom did a guest post about what she thinks about Gunpla months ago. At this point, I want my brother to review something. Um. 
but he's busy with real life. And so it's really hard to like schedule. I wanted, uh, I wanted him to re review his perfect grade. That was like my original idea for him doing a guest post was I would have asked him to do his perfect grade, but I guess he broke that uh, by uh, it accidentally falling off a shelf. So that's disappointing, but whatever life goes on this, uh, this bazooka is going to require some hardcore, like actual high grit, medium grit, low grit, careful sanding. Which is a little irritating because this this kit had been very good about not needing that. Um, so uh, that's probably my fault too because of my knife and not changing it. It doesn't cut as cleanly and it's more likely to leave stress marks and stuff. But whatever. It needs what it needs. I shall fulfill its need. And if it needs to be actually cleaned, then that is what I'll do. Here's the sights. I have to get that. I have to insert Ooh. Almost there, everyone. I promise. There's one last, uh, two last pieces I need, and then it will be done. I dropped it. Um, I'll talk about my, my real grade kit. Um, I would have it with its bazooka, but, uh, the hand peg for the bazooka, uh, broke. Um, so it can't be held. And so it just has a standing pose with its gun at its, uh, well, it's not really at its sides, crossed over. You'll see in a moment. Um, and it's heat hawk attached to its skirt. Um, it is the green. It is a regular Zaku 2C um, using the, not the, it's using the type of command spike I didn't use on this Zaku. I don't really know how to phrase that. Um, so yeah, uh, I think it'll be interesting to look at the real grade next to the master grade. It's sort of something I don't really have the ability to do except for this kit now, so I really want to do it. Um, You clip there, and you clip there, and I'm going to hold this tight, and you clip there. Ha ha! There's a cat yelling in the background being mean. Uh, this too will require sanding. Everything's trying to fight me today. Jeez. Why is nothing wanting to be my, my friend? Why does everyone want to fight me? It's, that's frustrating. But whatever. Uh, it's always not fun to cut towards your thumb. Even when you're used to it, it's something I try to actively avoid. But it is what it is. I am finished. Here you go. Here is the bazooka in all of its long glory. Uh, there is the scope uh, that needs to be sanded down. Has a cover on it that I can't get because I have no thumbnail, but I assure you it opens and closes. Um, it's holding its weapon, so uh, I'll quickly go over the decals. I've gone about 10 minutes over my normal time because I really, I expected this to be shorter, but whatever. So, uh, as I s Everything's fighting me. Everything's fighting me. Um, as I said, I'm not going to do a real big show off of the uh, decal work. I'm going to do a uh, tutorial. Here you can see the dry transfers um, backed with some wax paper so that they don't stick. 
Um, so that's those. I are, you'll see it eventually. I already used a couple of the sticker decals. Um, the pink one obviously is for the mono eye, but there's one directly under it that I ended up using. That is the nuclear radiation symbol because uh, the nuclear reactor is uh, in the torso in the bottom. It's part of the torso that flexes. So I already had to use that. But other than that, I've done no decal work. I'll do a tutorial on decals on my blog. So for now, here is, uh, let's get this set up here. I'm going to totally set it up so you can have the final view of the kit before it is put. Oh, okay, come on. Be nice. Why does everything hate me today? Everything's fighting me. Nothing is being nice. I don't like it. There. Uh, all right. He, no, that's not right. Uh, it's going to fight me. All right. This clip's in the back of the skirt, but it's not working right now. I'll figure it out later. Here is the Zaku in all of its glory. It has a gun, a heat hawk, a bazooka. Um, there it is. The skirt is going to bug me until I figure out how to best move it. The mono eye moves so it can track over there. So I'm excited. Uh, I love this thing. Despite all the problems it has caused me, it is still a great looking kit. Um, None of, none, of, none, of, none of the problems that really faced me, other than the cables, were any fault of it. It's more just my ineptitude. So, either way, you can look forward to that review and the dry transfer tutorial on uh, using this kit. So, here's the real grade Zaku. Um, as you can see, it is green. Here is it on the side. All the decal work is terrible. This was the first real gate I ever did, which also made it the first use of sticker decals. So it doesn't look very good, but um, the mono eye on this one moves as well. Over here, you can see that. Um, despite all of this thing's flaws and how everyone thinks it's the worst real grade ever, which I will say is the Justice Gundam for now, uh, I still enjoy this thing. Uh, I might be biased because it's a Zaku and Zaku's are my favorite, but Hey, whatever. Um, so here is Big Daddy Zaku with little baby Zaku posed. Uh, I'll set them up in front of each other during my outro. Thank you all so much for watching. This is, uh, as I said before, the final review until, or not review, final uh, stream until next week. Uh, the review of this will be up on the 10th, I think. Yes, 10th. Um, subscribe to DTube uh, to like financially support me. If you just want to watch the content, then you can just go ahead and uh, subscribe here. Like, comment, favorite, all the fun stuff. Um, I don't know what else I need to talk about. So uh, thanks again. Look forward to all the things I discussed. I'm rambled enough. Goodbye, everyone.